our members don't really get much of an opportunity to find out what Cornerstone has been up to. Uh, I'm going to try to hit some of the highlights, uh, Cornerstone highlights for the past year. And uh, I have to admit that because of uh, some personal issues here, this past year has been kind of a blur. So forgive me if I completely overlook something that I shouldn't have. Um, probably first and foremost, uh, this past year was Madison's Bicentennial Celebration. And uh, Cornerstone's contribution to that uh, officially was the effort to get the guidelines adopted before the end of the year. We succeeded in doing that when on November 3rd, Common Council adopted an amendment to the Historic District Ordinance that called for the use of, of those guidelines by the Historic Review Board um, when applications come before them to changes in the Historic District. Um, beyond the guidelines, I have to say that there probably wasn't an activity that took place in town to celebrate the Bicentennial that didn't involve, in one fashion or another, some cornerstone member. We had cornerstone people doing everything, and I was really proud of that. Good job. Good job. Thank you. Um, we typically try to put on four homeowner workshops in the year. I don't really think we managed to put four on this past year. Um, but we will make an effort to uh, bring those back into the picture. Um, and we're all, always looking for topics uh, that are of interest to our membership and the general public. Um, so if you have any ideas for workshop topic, topics, please pass those on to uh, any of the Cornerstone board members. Oh, and don't let me forget. Um, this past summer, Cornerstone was also honored by the Historic Landmarks Foundation of Indiana uh, by being awarded with the Sandy Servas Award in recognition of Cornerstone's efforts here in Madison for the past 20 plus years. Um, that award is on the table over here. Um, there are two of these awards presented every year, one to a, uh, a nonprofit organization and one to an individual. And this is, uh, those are award, statewide awards. So it was quite an honor for all of us in Cornerstone uh, to have been given that recognition. Okay, looking ahead. Um, we, the, the Cornerstone Board has been trying to come up with some ideas on how to get our membership more involved in the things that Cornerstone does. And um, the first step we're going to take to try to increase that member involvement is to formally establish some a number of different committees. Um, committees may or may not be headed up by a board member, but they will certainly include uh, the participation of non-board members. So we're going to need some volunteers. And if there's uh, not something that's of interest to you yet, please bring it to our attention. And uh, we'll see what we can do about getting uh, something going that is of interest to you. Uh, the, the kinds of committees that we have in mind at this point are membership, a nominating committee, a publicity committee, communications. Um, did you know Cornerstone has a website? We have had for over a year. Um, it's not getting much activity, but it's out there. Um, Brad, what is our website address? I was afraid you'd ask that. You can probably find it by Googling Cornerstone Society. I believe it's Cornerstone Society Inc. Info at Cornerstone Society Inc. Um, we need a committee to 
plan our workshops and a committee to develop new programs. We want to start some fundraising activities uh, beyond what we've done in the past. We've had a couple of major activities, uh, both of which we have intentions of repeating. Uh, going on three years ago, we had our first historic homes tour, which went over very well, was very well accepted by everyone who attended it. And this past year, we had the first ever Madison Antiques Market. Um, as I say, both of those, there are plans to uh, repeat both of those activities, fundraising activities in the future. But we need people to help work on getting them pulled together. We also want to start uh, applying for grants because uh, one of the programs that we are considering initiating is a homeowner assistance grant program uh, to help finance appropriate um, renovations, repairs to historic to houses, any houses, in the historic district. Uh, we have absolutely no details on this yet. We don't have a committee, but it will be up to whatever committee we form to establish the guidelines for this program and how it's all going to work. Um, and it's going to have to be uh, an ongoing program means that we're going to have to have ways to repeat uh, the funds that are used in the program uh, to replenish those funds. And that's where fundraising activities and grants come in. So those are some of the things that we're looking to in the future. And that brings us to today. And uh, there is a little bit of business that we do have to take care of today before uh, I bring our, our speaker uh, up to the podium. And that is that we have to take advantage of this opportunity of having you here to elect new board members. Um, let me start out by introducing our current board members. Obviously, um, I am President Rich Murray. Our Vice President is Brad Miller. Brad, you stand. Thank you. Our Treasurer is Meredith Gregg. Secretary is Ruth Murray. <laughs> and we have uh, two members at large, Heidi Sarethic and Ginger Jorgens. Um, we have um, had a seventh member on the board until just recently. Connie Partington has served on the board for six, seven years. There's Connie. Thank you, Connie. <laughs> for all of her work while she served on the board, and uh, we wish her the, the best of her endeavors from this point on. Now, um, our nominating committee, which is really the current board members, have come up with a proposed slate of new uh, candidates to be added to the board. And uh, I would like for these individuals to stand and remain standing as I introduce them. They are John DeLuca, Peter Ellis, is Peter here? Not here. He's flying to Denmark. Okay. <laughs> yes. Jack Patchen. Uh, Jan Beatrice is willing to come on the board, but is unable to be here today because of a girls' pink event. And Bob Wolf. Okay. <laughs> uh, are there any additional nominations from the floor? Being none, I would like to hear a motion to accept the proposed slate of board members. This has to be from a, from
from the ADI Cornerstone member. Great motion. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? <coughs> All right. Um, I would now like to ask for one more motion. Uh, you have just accepted the slate. Um, rather than voting on each of the uh, of those members individually, I would uh, like a motion to adapt the slate as accepted, which means that everybody on the slate is elected to office. Can I hear such a motion? I so move. I so move. Thank you. Very good. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, new member. Congratulations and welcome aboard. Uh, our next board meeting will be on March 25th, and we'll be receiving uh, further notification about that uh, further down the road. Okay, let's get to what you all came here for today. Now, um, you all know. Uh, what happened has happened to uh, our courthouse. Uh, devastating fire. Um, that fire was followed almost immediately by the promise that the courthouse would be rebuilt. And um, I hope you've driven by the courthouse recently. We know that that promise is being kept. And we want to thank the county for that. So, to tell us all about our courthouse. Um, I don't know what else she's going to cover here, um, but we're, uh, we're going to open it. Just leave it up to her. We have uh, County Commissioner Julie Berry with us today um, to enlighten us about our courthouse. And I'd like for all of us to welcome her. Thanks very much. Um, I see a lot of friends in the room and familiar faces. It's good to be here with you today. Um, I'm also representing uh, County Commissioners Tom Pekowski and Mark Cash today also, uh, who uh, send their best wishes and thanks for all the help that some members in this audience have given us already on the courthouse rebuild. Um, I'm going to have to put my glasses on. That happened to me a few years ago. Um, my title is, uh, my presentation is supposed to be the Jefferson County Courthouse Past, Present, and Future. And it's uh, kind of strange to me to be going over the past part of it because I feel like there are people in this room who uh, could tell me a lot about the past of the Jefferson County Courthouse. And I'm probably an inadequate uh, speaker on that, but just to give a little bit of background about the past. Um, the Jefferson County Courthouse is the second oldest courthouse, operating courthouse in the state of Indiana. It was put into use on the 28th of August, 1854, and is built in the Greek Revival style. Um, prior to May 20th, uh, the exterior had been largely returned to the 1854 appearance. Um, let's see, it is the third county courthouse to be built in Jefferson County. Two earlier ones were built on the same site. The first court was held in a room in a tavern rented from Samuel Burnett, and it was found unsatisfactory for Jefferson County because of the availability of liquor. Oh. Uh, it was used until it became unsuitable, and, uh, oh no, excuse me, in 1811, 1812, a two-story Buckeye log courthouse was built, and it was used until it became unsuitable, and then it was dismantled and removed by a local businessman, proving that preservation existed back in those days as well. Uh, the, uh, let's see, the second courthouse was a brick octagonal structure with a central hall and it was in use until in the midst of a conflict over building a new structure, fire destroyed it on the 12th of September, 1853. Um, the present courthouse was uh, first put into use on the 28th of August of 1854 and dedicated the following 15th of September. Um, as many of you know, it, 
uh, or no, it was designed by David, I believe I'm pronouncing this right, Dubak, is that how you say it? Dubak, Dubak, Dubak. And uh, the Switzerland County Courthouse just up the road from us on Highway 56 uh, was also designed by him and I think is a three-quarter scale um, replica, if you will, of the Jefferson County Courthouse. The marble for the uh, portico and ground floor was from the Marble Hill Quarry in Saluda, which I found interesting. And uh, let's see, a fire at the present courthouse in 1859 destroyed most of the interior. We're no stranger to fire here, I guess. Um, and the man who supervised the first construction used the original plans to rebuild that interior. Um, let's just skate along here. In 1960, which ironically was the year I was born, the second floor was divided horizontally and a third floor was added. Um, that was done by a company out of Batesville, Indiana, the West Beer Construction Company. And uh, that is kind of an interesting thing and, and that made the courthouse three stories instead of two. The clock tower, the clock itself was built by Captain Israel Fowler, who also installed the clock on the BB Courthouse in 1864. The first clock was operated by weights, but since then it was electronically operated, and as most of you know, it didn't work well a lot of the time. Um, and the bell that was in the clock tower um, was cast in Holland for the West Troy Bell Foundry in New York. However, the bell itself is imprinted with Cincinnati, Ohio. And the bell is composed of silver, nickel, brass, bronze, and tin, and it weighs around 3,200 pounds. And that was removed from the courthouse uh, uh, following the fire, uh, which is another story. Uh, two pieces of sculpture were placed on the lawn of the courthouse. The first was a monument placed by the jail in 1906. That's the Civil War monument that you still see there. And the second was a miniature uh, cast of the Statue of Liberty and that was donated to the county by Fritz Ernst in 1950. So that's pretty much the past. That's pretty much where we've been. Um, with the exception that uh, in 2008 we began a pretty extensive uh, exterior restoration of the courthouse. It was spiffed up really nice. I, I don't think it had ever looked better in my lifetime than it looked on probably May 19th, May 20th of 2009. And uh, uh, I guess that is goes with the, uh, uh, you know, we were trying to get, get ready for the bicentennial. It was going to be a centerpiece of the bicentennial. And we felt that it was important to get it looking good, painted up, tucked in, and fixed up. And, uh, life is what happens when you're busy making other plans, I guess. So I know all of you know about the fire of May 20, which brings us to the present. Um, we were very, very lucky in Jefferson County to have a dedicated group of volunteer firemen. Um, all of our firemen were active in, in the fire on the 20th, and our neighbors in southern Indiana and northern Kentucky also responded to our call for help. Um, the building was saved. Uh, and it's funny, I don't think anybody ever thought about tearing down that building and starting from scratch. I just don't think that it's a, a thought that flickered across anybody's mind uh, in the moments after the fire, the days and weeks after, although I suppose that could have been an option. It, it wasn't an option to us. Um, one of the most immediate uh, tasks at hand was document restoration. Ron Grimes was involved in that a bit, I know, as well as some of the rest of you. We lined up refrigerated semis uh, around the courthouse square beginning the day after and trying to work hard with the ATF board that, you know, at that time they weren't sure what caused the fire. It turned out later that it was a, a spark, an errant spark, and it caused the, the fire. But uh, they loaded uh, the documents, which were saturated with water from those firemen that were fighting the fire, into those refrigerated trucks. Uh, they were kept at 28 degrees below zero. Most of them ended up in a warehouse in Detroit, Michigan, kept in those deep freeze conditions. And we were fortunate in that we have gotten back almost everything that we sent up. We're, I know we're expecting a, a shipment uh, next week, or March the 5th. Is March the 5th next week? I believe so. And uh, that has been a, 
an expensive ordeal, but thankfully, if you see Tom DeVee, thank him, we were fairly well insured. So insurance did cover that, and that was a priority right after the fire. Then we came to the selection of professional help. Um, we knew we needed help right away, uh, and we put out a call for that. We formed an advisory commission. Um, 28 architectural engineering firms submitted uh, statements of qualifications to Jefferson County to be the ones to help us through that. That was a job in itself, sorting through all the people that wanted to, to work on that. Uh, in the end, American Structure Point out of Indianapolis and a firm called ArcTrio uh, are, are, were the professionals that we went with. Um, we were also assisted by local preservationists, several of whom are in this room, Link Leddington, uh, Ron I'd mentioned earlier, many, I don't want to leave anybody out because there was a lot of help. Terry Woolenweber, who I think is from Milan, Indiana, helped us with some um, plaster moldings in, in items from the courthouse were taken out that could be salvaged and are still being held and that's going to help us a great deal toward the rebuild. We had temporary office space to think about right away. We had the, the business of county government had to go on. And uh, it's funny, our insurance agent, uh, who's based out of New Jersey, Indiana, uh, he was an agent for one of the companies that lost their office space in the World Trade Center after the 9-11 bombings. And when we told him that the main source bank in Madison was offering Jefferson County free office space for up to two years, with us just paying a portion of the utilities. He couldn't believe it. He said, I just, I, you can't imagine, I, he said, I can't imagine this happening anywhere else. And uh, that has been a godsend. Um, and then, but there wasn't enough room for everyone. So we also utilized uh, office space at the Venture Out Business Center for a while. And we very quickly redid our Eagles building, uh, the old Eagles building, which we now call our Jefferson Street Annex. Um, and uh, we have our circuit court in our county clerk's office in there. Um, we had um, tremendous technology issues. Everybody is computerized and everybody needs to be networked together. And having people spread out over, up on the hill down here, you know, downtown, it was very, very complicated. And so the completion of the Eagles building was vital in our, uh, our recovery to keep business going. Um, we meet continuously. I see Will Gearing in the audience, who's our county attorney, and he's been a godsend to us as well. Uh, with our insurance company, we have daily meetings, it seems like, with on insurance issues, and uh, our mold remediation is ongoing as well. Um, we uh, have had things going from the beginning on that. We've had dehumidifiers in their fans. There was a membrane placed on top of the uh, courthouse covering the walls and the floor on the third floor since the roof had burned away that was similar to a swimming pool liner, I guess you would say, to try to keep it from further moisture damage. I can't tell you how many people said to me, you're just letting it rain and snow into there. And, you know, no, we weren't. Uh, we were, we were, uh, that was protected, not to the best of extent that it could be, but it was protected. Um, I mentioned Will. Will's been great. He's been dealing with our insurance issues. Tom Petrakowski, my fellow commissioner, is a contractor, and Mark Cash uh, is a technology expert. So I tease them all the time and tell them that my role is to be their bossy big sister. That's what I do, I guess. Um, our rebuild uh, needs, let me go over that with you for just a second. We're, we're focusing on our rebuild now um, and some decisions have to go into that rebuild situation. Based on statistics kept by the Indiana Judicial Conference, the two Jefferson County judges, that would be Judge Ted Todd and Judge Allison Frazier, have averaged the work of three judges for the past five years. Only five Indiana counties out of 92 have an average caseload per judge heavier than that of Jefferson County. And the normal course of action in Indiana based on case overload like that is for the state to assign a county a third court or appoint a magistrate to handle the extra caseload. In any event, a third courtroom would be needed, so we know that we're facing that. Uh, we have plenty of current space limitations for the county. Uh, uh, 
we don't have a private meeting room for attorneys, clients, or victims of crime. Um, sometimes victims and perpetrators must sit next to each other in the hallway. I bet you've all seen the hallway where people wait on the benches before they go into court. Some of you may be a jury for me. This creates additional security issues and hardship for the public as well as law enforcement and judicial staff. Um, I don't know how many of you were familiar with our genealogy uh, spacious offices. Uh, not very spacious, I'm just being sarcastic. Uh, and they shared those with voter registration, which also wasn't enough room. Um, storage of records has been a constant problem for the Jefferson County Courthouse. Uh, the basement held many of the records, uh, as I mentioned, most of which have been returned from ERS. And the Jefferson County Commissioners and County Council have never had an adequate room to accommodate the public, uh, particularly on issues of great interest and concern where the public would like to be involved. Don't know if anybody was ever in the uh, Planning and Zoning Surveyor's Office up on the second floor, but uh, it's, a, it's an office where if you were working in there, if two people were working in there, one had to get up while the other went to the restroom or and there were no room to speak of for the public to squeeze inside. Jefferson County is currently paying rent to the Red Cross for the Veteran Service Office. Uh, that office is not handicapped accessible and does not have access to a restroom. So those are some of the considerations that we looked at um, as we were coming up with, uh, with the master plan, which I'll touch on in just a moment. Um, and also, the study that I was reading from earlier was by Schmidt and Associates. It's dated July 16, 1997. It was a comprehensive space analysis done for Jefferson County, which showed at that time that we were 11,000 square feet short of meeting our space needs for, for county government. Um, we have gotten asbestos removal done. We have had interior demolition <coughs> completed. <coughs> Our roof is almost complete. You've been able to see the progress. I was talking to Brad Miller in the back room earlier, and did anybody ever think they would see a porta toilet on top of the Jefferson County? <laughs> <laughs> Brad and I were talking, and I'm going to tell you, I would have had to go to the bathroom awfully bad. <laughs> I can't imagine. But there it was, and, uh, and we were very fortunate that uh, Harmon Construction, which is based out of North Vernon, Indiana, was the low bid on that project. Brenz Getzweiler, based out of Batesville, also has done a lot of masonry work as a subcontractor to Harmon, but uh, many people that work for Harmon live in Jefferson, Jennings, uh, Jackson counties, Ripley, so we're lucky that we've had local construction workers on it. Uh, the dome couple of bids will be awarded on April the 2nd. Uh, that's the plan. Um, the internal rebuild plans and specs are now being prepared. Um, and that's kind of an ongoing uh, process. Uh, just a couple of things. Uh, Newton County, Indiana, which is much closer to Chicago than it is to, to us, the day after the, uh, the fire, I, I got a call. My cell phone continued to go dead. I, everybody was calling. I had so many calls. And, but I did get this call. and, and I. The guy said, uh, is this Julie Berry? And I said, it is. And he said, well, this is Bill Clinton. And I thought it was my brother-in-law, Mickey, playing a joke on me because he does that all the time. And I said, you know, I'm really busy. And I <laughs> have time to talk to you, Mickey. And he says, no, he says, I get that a lot. My name really is Bill Clinton, and I'm the IT director for Newton County, Indiana. And he said, we have just been, um, uh, we're getting ready to do our changeover for our computers, which have been formatted to to Indiana um, auditor, recorder, assessor uh, models. Molly, I'm not saying this right. It's, it, it's close enough. Is it close enough? Yeah. Myself, so. yeah, yeah. And you, you, the county needed pro computers that were programmed to do what they needed it to do. Well, Newton County was just about to do its changeover, and us, because of finances, which we find ourselves in a lot, had put that off. And uh, he said, I'm willing to uh, send our 25 computers that are formatted to your county needs down, um, well, he, did, he said if you, if you could send a truck up, you can get it tonight. So they put their transfer over uh, off, and they shipped all those computers down to us. M&M Trucking, M&M Towing actually sent a truck up for them at no cost to us. 
and we were able to get up and running uh, the Monday after the, uh, the fire. We had a lot of card tables and, and things going, but and just a lot of neat stories. And, and does everybody remember the dome? Sort of, you know, we were just so that had to be one of the top concerns. Um, they shut off Jefferson Street and Main Street 56 because of the danger of that toppling over. And uh, we were outside. Uh, it rained a lot. Does everybody remember the torrential rain, biblical rains we got, you know, during that time period? But uh, the our professionals decided about five after five on an evening to that the, we had to send for cranes to get that tower down. It was just too dangerous. And we, we needed to take it down. And uh, what happens at five o'clock? Well, every, everybody, all officers shut down. So we needed a permit from the Indiana Department of Transportation to get that uh, to get those heavy duty cranes down to, to Madison from Indianapolis. And so Will Gearing is standing there. We're all scratching our heads. And, and Ted Todd had asked us what what he could do. And, between the two of them, Will Gearing and Ted Todd, uh, they issued a court order so that the cranes wouldn't be stopped at the Seymour Way Station. They would have been subject to a fine if they didn't have a permit. But we needed them there first thing in the morning. And uh, the guy called me and he said, Julie, I'm kind of afraid to take this risk. I said, well, how much is the fine? And he says, well, it's $10,000. And I said, well, I said, you know, our judge has issued a court order. He's contacted the judge in Jackson County. I feel like you're going to be fine. He says, well, I just can't really risk a $10,000 fine. I said, we'll pay it. If you get it charged, we'll pay it. Well, I didn't have any money to pay that. I was just uh, walking, you know. But anyway, so the first thing I see him come in, and I said, well, how did it go? And he says, well, we got by the Seymour Way Station on 65, and they waved us on through. I think we also faxed something to the state police post. Yeah, we, we tried to cover all ways so we wouldn't have to pay the $10,000 fine. But stories that just came up with this are amazing. Well, let's get to the future. That's where, we did. That's where we've been, that's where we are, and here's where we're going. The county commissioners have come up with a master plan uh, regarding the rebuild of the Jefferson County Courthouse. And we are proposing that um, we rebuild the courthouse, of course. We change the configuration a little bit. There's been lots of meetings going on with office holders, uh, you know, about how it can flow best because this courthouse was built a long time ago. And, our population has probably tripled since, since it was built and uh, needs have changed considerably. We are proposing to put on a three-story addition on the south side of the courthouse that would be a basement, a first and a second floor, giving us an additional 10,000 approximate square feet. Um, and we think that that's going to cost us about $1.9 million. That's our, our, our estimate. We're seeking grant money from uh, Lawrenceburg, the Lawrenceburg Economic Development Fund, to help with that. Although Jefferson County does have enough money in the uh, Keaton Courthouse Fund, which we've been accumulating for years and years and years, to pay for the project, there will be no tax increase uh, in association with this plan. Additionally, and this may be of interest to some of the members in the room, the Wilson Building, which up until recently had been housing our county extension office, now houses our probation officers, and that's another interesting story, but I, I don't want to go on into too many stories. Um, we're, our intention is to auction off the Wilson Building. We don't feel like we've been taking care of it as it should be taken care of. Uh, we had it appraised a number of years ago and made some inquiries then, and our plan would be to auction that building off and use the proceeds to help pay for the uh, rebuild in addition, whatever the insurance doesn't cover in the addition itself. Um, let's see. And this would take care of, we feel like, our space needs for some time now, uh, coupled with the Eagles building, the Jefferson Street Annex that we've already got in, into use. Um, and I do have copies of, I, I don't have enough for everyone, but I do have copies of the plans uh, for that. And I have some other copies that are going to show what the rooms would be used for, the third court room, et cetera. Drug court, we've established a drug court in Jefferson County and the line. So in closing, um, I would just mention that I wasn't aware of this when the courthouse burned, and I didn't become aware of it until immediately after. But the state of Indiana has uh, started uh, 
Indiana Courthouse Preservation Advisory Commission. Um, I've got the handout from that also. And it's designed to give counties throughout Indiana options and resources as far as restoring their courthouses uh, and repairing them as opposed to moving into new buildings. Um, and I think this was sort of spurred by the Randolph County Courthouse deal. Does everybody remember the 80-year-old 80, 80 women who got together and did the nude calendar? They called them the calendar girls. There was a movie, I think, that, was, that they kind of gave them the idea. Well, they did, you got to give them credit, they did save that courthouse, I think, so maybe, you know, with that effort. And uh, I've been asked to serve on that committee, and I'm, I'm sure that this is because of the Jefferson County Courthouse fire. If they, you know, that, I think that's why they wanted me to serve. So I uh, have been going to those meetings, and that's being chaired by Randall Shepard, who's the Chief Justice of the Indiana Supreme Court. It's quite interesting. And I've learned a lot just by going, going to the meetings. Marsh Davis from Historic Landmarks is on it. There's uh, two other county commissioners from Northern Indiana. And, uh, and anyway, it, it, I wish that I would have been well versed in that prior to our fire, but you know, hindsight's 2020. That's about it. Uh, that's our past, present, and future. Um, again, I'd like to, uh, to thank you for all the work that many of you in this room did after we had our fire. And also thank you for probably contributing to a culture of preservation in Jefferson County so that when our courthouse did burn down, um, the first thought wasn't to just demolish the building and build new, but instead to try to uh, restore what was there and, uh, and build on our past. And I think probably Cornerstone and HMI and a lot of other groups that have operated in Jefferson County have contributed to that culture uh, where something like what they proposed in Randolph County, I don't think would happen. Thank you for your time, and I'd like to open it up just for a few questions and answers if we could. Yes, ma'am. Uh, are you aware of the um, uh, historic uh, Wilson Building? Okay. Cornerstone, what very hard in the early 90s uh -huh. to preserve that. Uh, how did the courthouse get county become property owners and stewards of that and now you have time to auction it off. We do. I, in the 90s, I, I believe, in the 80s or 90s. And it's neglected. I go by it all the time and uh, the county has not been a good steward. I don't well disagree with you and that's why we want to auction it off. Um, I will tell you, I'm not well. aware of how the county became an owner of the Wilson building. It happened, of course, before my time. My knowledge of the history of it is that they wanted to tear it down at one time and build a health department there. And I think Cornerstone was very active in that uh, in that community discussion, which eventually led to the county and the city of Madison got involved, and, and they decided not to do that and build a health department on the hilltop. Uh, it's a building that requires more than what county government can give to it. It's not our business to be in this work preservation. Uh, well, since the time that I've been a commissioner, we've put a new roof on it, and we've put a new furnace into it. We've done some tech pointing work on it, and tore off the back porch, which wasn't original to the building. But we feel, all the commissioners feel, I should say, that somebody else could take better care of it than the county. We had it appraised about five years ago. It appraised at that time for about $56,000. We have put a roof on it, as I mentioned, and done some things to it since then, but the market's down, so that's probably what we could expect from it from an auction. And that's that's the plan we have. I hope that somebody that will take better care of it than the county has. Yes, sir. I really wonder where you can see new construction start for the addition to the courthouse. Well, I don't, I, I'm not positive that's going to take place. That's the master plan that I told you. Uh, the county council, which is the fiscal body of Jefferson County, has approved the architect, American construction firm, to prepare plans for that addition. However, we don't have financing sewed up yet. So um, until that is sewed up, uh, I don't know. Plans are going on right now for it, and it will probably be bid as an alternate. Um, and I would expect that we should be probably bidding that out sometime in early summer of this year. Yes, Rob. 
two questions. Uh, first, what is going to happen to the bell? Is it going to be restored to the tower? The bell is not going to go back up in the tower. Uh, the bell was damaged in the fire to some extent. It needs some work. And we've got it stored right now in what we call the purple building. Um, it was the exercise building for the Jefferson County Jail. I don't know if you know where I mean or not. It, it's the, it intersects with the alley that runs south behind the courthouse. It's stored there. And what we would like to do, if we do build the addition, this is what we've talked about, nothing set in stone. But we'd like to incorporate that into the uh, foyer between the two. Or if we don't build the addition, to put it somewhere in the courthouse lawn as some sort of monument uh, covered up somehow. Um, that's about as far as we've gotten with it. But it is not, it's not planned for it to go back up in the tower. The other question is, uh, what provisions are going to be made for genealogy research? That's always been a, kind of a, something that was really not the mission of the, the county courthouse, and it got stuck into a room that was. If the addition project goes through, that's going to be a lot better. Uh, it's going, there's going to be a lot more space for it. It's going to be separated from uh, voter registration, and it will be a much better situation. If the addition doesn't get built, doesn't doesn't go through, I, I think it's going to be much the same as it was prior to the fire. Other questions? Yes, ma'am. Don't call me, ma'am. Um, okay, thank you. <laughs> Could the county get an insurance payment for that bill? Like, you put an insurance claim on it? Uh, it's cut, it, it will be covered by insurance. What the repair of it? Mm -hmm. Is that what you're talking about? So are you going to but it hasn't happened yet. Are you going to have it repaired? Yes, and I'm not exactly sure what all needs to happen with it. We do have it right now in storage in the purple building back behind the courthouse and the jail. Um, and it's kind of a specialized. Will, do you have anything to add to that? You've kind of been on the insurance meeting, committee meeting on that. Just uh, on, the, on the bell itself, right now, we haven't done very much with that. Uh, hopefully all it needs is an extra restoration. Yes. But we didn't even want to, you know, really sound the bell at this point until it is tested carefully to make sure there's not any kind of heat or actual heat damage. Uh, we can get uh, a tone, the same tone the bell makes, and use that in the, in the new uh, clock tower. But uh, hopefully that bell will be more accessible, more visible. It's 3,000 plus pounds that we don't want to put back up on top of the courthouse. Any other questions? Well, thank you very much.